Uh, Jonathan, it's been a while, man. Ring of Honor TV has been a little dark here. How have you been dealing with the pandemic at the moment? Uh, to be honest, the same way that I've been dealing with just life in general. I've been training. Uh, I never stopped training. Um, when all the gyms were closed, uh, I figured out ways to work out outside. I went for long runs. I found playgrounds to do pull-ups on and different things like that. I just uh, I got creative. Uh, I had to. So uh, I had to keep in shape because you never know when you're going to get the call. Yeah, absolutely. When you say you get creative, what are you, what are you doing? Are you doing Rocky style? Are you going out back? Are you lifting hay bales? Right now? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, for sure. Uh, like push-ups with different like bricks on my back, weights that we found, and we were able to like borrow from like gyms that were near us. Um, a lot of resistant bands training. Um, we were actually able to uh, borrow a straight bar with some like Olympic style weights on it. So I kept that in the back of my car and just went to uh, like a Walmart parking lot did wind sprints up and down the parking lot uh, in the early morning when no cars were around and, uh, you know, walking lunges with the uh, straight bar up and down too. So I just doing everything I can just to keep in ring shape. Man, I would imagine you and Jordan, I bet, I bet you guys push each other quite a bit. Like she seems like <laughs> that's very motivated as well to stay in great shape. So Yes, yes, yes. That's a lot of that going on. We, we definitely need that encouragement from each other. Man. All right. Well, Jonathan, I, I am so excited to chat with you, man. Like, Ever since I saw you at Bloodsport, I was uh, I've just been so captivated by you as a performer and like watching you come into your own in the last year or two. Um, what what has it been like for you these these past couple of years? Really finding your style and your tone when it comes to to pro wrestling, because I feel like you really you really have. Um, you know, um, earlier in my career, I was so like focused on people kind of getting lost in what I present in the ring so they wouldn't notice my height or my size. Um, I feel like that was the biggest like obstacle to get over. And in time, you know, people still kind of paid attention to it, but they also recognized what I was bringing in the ring. So um, as time went on and I finally joined Ring of Honor and uh, I was, uh, in my eyes, I felt like, you know, I was able to have good or great matches with everybody I, I got in the ring with, I started to ask myself, why is it that I'm not like being used in better situations to like basically climb the ladder in professional wrestling? And uh, it hit me that uh, what over 10 years of my career, I've only focused on in ring and I never gave a lot of thought or a lot of time to, you know, promos and uh, like uh, my perception as far as like my character. Um, so in the last couple of years, I really started to like think about presenting myself differently. Um, and uh, that was the start of uh, the, like the octopus moniker and like the look with the different masks I tried before. I was just literally trial and error, just trying different things. And um, things started to click when I, uh, I just kind of stopped looking and just did the first thing that came to mind instead of overthinking things. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Jonathan, like, you, you feel like a throwback in a way to me. You remind me of, like, that, the, the, the great grapplers of, like, what we saw at WCW, you know, like the, the Jerichos and the Benoits and the Malinkos and stuff. Who are, who are some of the wrestlers that have influenced you as you've been going through this transition here the past couple of years? Uh, man, that's is really difficult to, like, pick one guy because everyone offered something different. I break wrestling down and that's, we'll come back to the overthinking thing again. Like I overthink everything. I have this idea that like, like a, a writer for a movie or a author or whatever, when they make the first draft, that's not what they, they put forward and like mass produce and put out. So I'm pretty sure to write a book or write a movie, it takes years, months to really like make it in your mind perfect. So um, I do the same thing with like wrestling. I, I look at let's say Dean Malenko for, for one thing. And I'll look at a Ben Wall or Perry Saturn for another reason. I'll look at Brian Danielson and a Coca Cabana for different reasons. And I just try to take those different things and, and really like put them in to practice and uh, put them into my matches. And to me, it took a really long time to get to a point where people recognize what I'm doing and like give me credit for, I guess the work that I've put in, but um, just to name a few, of course, like, all the guys early ring of honor, they really like, you know, changed the direction of my life. The company alone, what they represented at the time, just changed the direction of my life altogether. So, um, I mean, credit has to go to, of course, like the Malenko's, uh, the Jericho's, um, you know, guys like Johnny Saint, uh, 
Flash Jordan from uh, Oro Sport. Um, it's just so many. It's really difficult to like spit them all out right now. But like so many guys have influenced me from Homicide, to Samoa Joe, Lethal, McGinnis, Danielson. Um, like so many guys, man. I even look back at like Luthez matches and things of that nature. And it still inspires me to this day. So um, like I just pull inspiration from a little bit of everybody. Do you feel like the wrestling business, like, you know, because you're so in tune with the style, right? And I feel like Ring of Honor in general has always been kind of the place that the style for pro wrestling is set. Do you feel like the business is moving it back more towards that traditional grappling style in a way from kind of what we've seen in the past 10, 15 years, which is a more athletic, high-flying style? Or do you think I'm overstating when I say something like that? No, you're definitely not overstating. Um, something that's always said is the wheel is round. Um, and I think people are now noticing – that uh, and I can go more in detail on the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic to me on pro wrestling. But <clears throat> ultimately, um, I think Ring of Honor uh, since its inception has been like a trendsetter. Uh, so I look back at uh, the guys and if you really like study the matches of like Joe and Danielson and all the early guys in the Ring of Honor, they were kind of borrowing the King's Road mentality of professional wrestling. That was popular. If you really notice the way, like they would build with like you know small stories of like chain wrestling and filling out each other and using signature moves first and then using their big moves and then the moves that like nobody is supposed to kick out of. I call those like the burning moves, kind of like uh, you know Kabashi's fucking burning hammer. Yeah, yeah. But um, like they borrowed it from them. Then around two thousand five, two thousand six. Gabe had the idea of bringing Dragon Gate to America. And when that happened, the style changed on the independence. Yeah. And if you notice, that style took over, and we're still kind of living in that, that mindset of wrestling right now because it's graduated to the point of all the guys that were on the lower tier cards of Ring of Honor at that time took that style to the next level, and it became the main style of Ring of Honor. And then those guys graduated and went off to the TNA – WWE and so on and so forth and they took that style along with them and now that is a style that everyone is trying to do so I believe that a lot of people are noticing that and hopefully a lot of the younger guys are noticing that it's like okay well there's so many guys doing this particular style of wrestling that I need to differentiate myself and do something else because if you really look at wrestling as a whole everyone is wrestling the Will Ospreay young bucks kind of style wrestling yeah yeah and if, yeah if you're not going to be the front runners in that particular style then why don't you hop in another lane i i try to tell all the younger guys that i work with like try to emulate guys like necro butcher if you think about that style of wrestling can you name five guys that are doing that style right now necro butcher should just come out and fight people you can't really name five guys that do that right now um you know, the vintage luchador style, the maestro way, Negro Navarro. There's no guys besides those guys that are doing that style of wrestling right now, presenting it that way. Yeah. So it's really important to differentiate yourself so fans can enjoy on one show, like different styles of wrestling. Yeah, no. I think that's really important. No, no, absolutely, man. And, and Jonathan, man, again, like the light, like I've been watching you for years and the light bulb went off over my head when I saw you in that blood sports space, when I saw you with these grapplers and I was like, I get this guy. I finally get Jonathan Gresham. He will murder you. He will rip your arm out in a million different ways. And it's so cool. And like with the octopus mask and everything, man, it's like, you're, you're like a, like a Batman villain or something, you know, <laughs> when you turn it on, you know? Um, so, so talk to me here about like your influence in bringing back this pure championship. Like what was your influence in bringing it back? And, and what do you hope that this title brings to ring of honor here is the, is the company looks to, to restart at the moment. Um, ultimately I look at professional wrestling. I like to, I like to think that I think of wrestling a little bit differently than most people. I think a lot of people try to chase the current like fad of wrestling. Uh, and to me, you know, that's fine. A lot of people like have success doing that. But, um, when I grew up in wrestling, uh, you know, the, trainers and the seminars that I went to, they would always preach this idea of wrestling is supposed to be a variety show. And as I progressed in wrestling and um, started doing seminars myself, I noticed that that was something that was preached, but not practiced. 
Um, and I feel, and uh, hopefully I don't get any heat with this, but just to be as transparent as possible, I look at TNA back in the day uh, of um, like when they had the X division was really big and they had like the women's tag division and the women's knockout division, right? To me, they were what, what, 10 years ahead of their time. If you look at professional wrestling now, I'm not sure, but I think we're still in the middle of a women's revolution. Yeah. Like they were ahead of the time, but then for some reason they decided to ditch that awesome like direction and then go back to essentially being, you know, mainstream light WWE light. They just mimicked WWE. And I feel like most companies do that instead of trying to figure out their own identity. And that brings me back to the pure championship. Yeah. Um, when you look at wrestling as a whole, um, everything is kind of the same. When you look at divisions, when you look at the Ring of Honor world title division versus the Ring of Honor television division, there's no difference, really. When you look at it, it's just a secondary belt in the company. When you look at the world title in WWE and you look at the United States division, it's pretty much just another division. Yeah. There's no difference. So to me, to have all these belts in one company, what does it really mean? So... In my mind, the pure division and the way wrestling and Ring of Honor was when I first started watching, it was different than anything else. They presented it as a sport. Um, and that attracted me to the company right away because it was different than TNA. It was different than WWE. It was different than anything else I was watching at the time. And so when I first joined the company, I thought to myself, okay, you know, it's cool to be here. How can I differentiate myself and stand out? I'm not going to stand out, you know, trying to do Young Bucks stuff. Those guys are the best at what they do. Right. Uh, and then I looked at like, you know, Cody arriving and he was really charismatic. And I was thinking, oh, man, like the only thing that's missing right now for this to be a variety show, because we have like we have the guys that can go like the Young Bucks. We have like the charismatic guys like Cody, you know, we need the technicians now. Yeah. And we need a place for them to thrive. And the only way to do that is to bring pure wrestling back. To me, the pure title and the division is something that nobody else in the industry can try to replicate because it, is, it belongs to Ring of Honor. Yeah. So that's kind of a part of our big identity. If you wanna see the best technical style wrestling, you have to come to Ring of Honor. So I made it my mission, like kayfabe and like, you know, uh, my character to like somehow push to bring pure wrestling back. I would talk to anybody about it at any moment I would always talk about it to management, to the referees, to fans even. I wanted them to believe in this because it's something I truly believed in. So, um, yeah, I hope I answered your question there. Yeah, with, no, totally, man. I'm, I'm enjoying, like, hearing your philosophy and, like, mindset behind this because there's definitely, like, a movement going on in pro wrestling right now. And, like, you put a, your, the moniker on yourself as the foundation and hearing you talk about how you saw that niche for technical wrestling – I absolutely agree with you. I, I know it's a little off the beaten path and not necessarily in like Ring of Honor territory, but like, what do you think when you see something like Raw Underground? Do you like that presentation of that grittier, hard hitting style? Or do you think that that's maybe too much and like away from, from what you're working on right now? No. Um, a lot of people think technical wrestling is just like, you know, going to wrist locks, hammer locks, or whatever. But like, technical wrestling is so much more than that. There's, and you know, something that really bothers me is like when you watch mixed martial arts yeah. on television, you can differentiate stylistically who's who you can differentiate like uh, a jujitsu guy versus an amateur wrestler and like uh, a Muay Thai guy versus a kickboxer. Why isn't pro wrestling the same? Like there's so many different styles up under pro wrestling. You know, you have the maestro style, you have the, 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 the Lucha Libre way of like high flying, which is completely different from an American high flyer. The issue is now is like we as companies and professional wrestlers aren't pushing that to the masses. We're not letting them know that I am different from Zack Sabre Jr. I am different from Timothy Thatcher. And we're all technical wrestlers, but we present technical wrestling differently. You know what I mean? We have a different psychology, a different like approach to it. And to me, that's what makes technical wrestling so great is that like you can put two technical wrestlers in the ring, me versus Zack Sabre or me versus Timothy Thatcher. We're the same, but we're different. And to me, you can't really say that about a lot of different high flyers because the genre is so popular that there's only so many techniques that you see high flyers use 
and they all kind of use the same thing. If you watch a show, definitely on the independence, you watch, I don't know, six matches, you kind of see the same kind of, you know, routines done in these matches because like everybody's chasing that, that young bucks, Will Ospreay way of professional wrestling, instead of just doing something that you really enjoy, instead of trying to do something that you think fans and promoters want to see just to get a job. I wrestled for myself and the love of it. And I feel like a lot of people have gotten away from that. They love pro wrestling, but they're more concerned with getting a job than doing what they love. And for, for sure, man. And, and, you know, you brought up the, the, the women's revolution earlier, and that was something I wanted to ask you about is, is you're revitalizing this pure division in this, you know, uh, category for ring of honor. You know, there are some criticisms uh, and it's not just with ring of honors with other promotions as well as about the, the push of women. What do you, what do you, what's your response to, to fans who may not see the women of honor division as strong as other divisions and, and things that are going on in ring of honor at the moment? I feel like um, what they see is reality. Um, but you also have to understand that the talent pool for women is a lot smaller than it is for men. Yeah. Um, a lot of the women have been signed by, you know, TNA and WWE um, that like off the top of your head when you think of women's wrestling, you know, you think of certain names and those names are already, you know, signed. So now uh, for companies like Ring of Honor that <clears throat> are a little bit, you know, behind with, uh, you know, using the women in the proper light. Right. I think we have to reset and we have to find those diamonds in the rough now because a lot of the main names that would make people automatically pay attention are all signed right now. Um, but I think that's something that uh, Ring of Honor is definitely uh, uh, moving forward with. I don't want to go in too much detail, but we sure. had announced a women's wrestling tournament already. Yeah. So I really think we're on the verge of really, uh, you know, showing the world something different soon. For sure, man. All right. Well, one of the things I also wanted to ask you about uh, while I've got you here right now is, uh, you know, the, the pure tournament title uh, uh, competitors, right? This is a very diverse pool uh, of, of athletes that you've gotten here. Is there anybody in particular that you think people should keep their eyes on here right now as you're uh, reestablishing this pure title uh, picture? Man, um, I really, uh, I mean, he's known around the world as being, the best wrestler in Ring of Honor, and in my personal opinion, the best wrestler in the world, Jay Lethal. I really think uh, people don't give him enough credit for his technical prowess, uh, and I really think he's somebody to really watch out for because he's really good at uh, reinventing himself um, over time, and I really admire that about him. Um, but as far as independent talents coming into the tournament, men that I've worked with uh, on the indies like Fred Yehai, I think the world of Fred Yehai, I really – don't understand how he isn't signed somewhere. Uh, I really hope Ring of Honor hops on that. Um, Wheeler Yuta as well. Um, I've worked with him a few times and trained with him on the independence. Uh, I think the world of him as well. He's uh, trained by Hot Sauce, Tracy Williams, and Drew Gulak, two guys I have a lot of respect for in the business. Um, who else is there? Uh, Tony, uh, Deppin was, Tony Deppin was somebody oh, that definitely caught my eye where I was like, man, yeah. I'm so glad to see that guy getting a shot here right now, you know? So I yeah, didn't... Tony Deppin is one of those guys that, like, uh, I was around when he first started arriving around, like, CGW and beyond and stuff, I think. And, uh, like, he's grown so much since I've been gone from the Indies. So seeing him being a part of, uh, you know, PWG and Ring of Honor just, like – it's just amazing to me how like I took my attention off and then when I pay attention again, he's like, he's come so far, you know what I mean? And like uh, the fans are really gravitating towards him as being one of the top guys on the indie. So, you know, um, I really hate the idea of taking him away from the indies, but I think ring of honor needs guys like him. With yeah, that dude, buzz. And I don't think that he's going to complain getting taken off the Indies to come join ring of honor and get to, to wrestle in this, this tournament or anything like that. So. For, sure, for sure. But I really, I really think, um, and this is kind of getting off topic, but I really think the Indies still needs guys that are growing like Deppin that can go back and kind of, uh, for lack of a better way to say, but mentor like the younger guys coming up because yeah. if they're just left to their own devices, then they have to kind of fend for themselves. But like when I was coming up, I had guys like Claudio and Hero that I could, you know, message or see in person and ask them, like, what am I doing? Is this right? What would you do? Uh, I did that to guys like, you know, Cabana and I would see him and Jimmy Jacobs on shows. And really right now, those guys are no longer available on the yeah. Indies. So 
who do you have to go to? And that's what I mean by like taking guys like Deppin off the Indies. But hopefully, you know, it works out and, um, you know, hopefully he can probably do both. I never trained with Claudio, but I am drinking his coffee right now. I got a little Claudio espresso <laughs> in my coffee right now. So. Nice, nice, nice. All right, last thing, and I t- I've taken a little over time here, Jonathan, but I'm, I've been very excited. Well, to don't, 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 f- don't feel, you know, I mean, 20 minutes was like, you know, that's fine. We can go over if you'd like. I yeah, well, don't have much to do here today. The thing I really wanted to ask you about is, Jonathan, I've heard that you've really come into your own, not just as a wrestler, but as a leader in the Ring of Honor locker room. And I know you're a Ring of Honor tag team champions, uh, with with Jay Lethal, and you you've talked about how much to see from him. How much have you learned from Jay, and how is it for you moving into a role as more of a, a locker room leader here, Jonathan? Uh, you know that's funny you say that. I um, I've heard this recently, maybe three or four times now, about me being a locker room leader. And yeah. when I look around that locker room, I definitely don't see myself as that. When I look around, I see guys. <laughs> that have the experience like PCO guys that have been around like Kenny King that saw me when I first started and I was getting like, you know, squash matches at FIP back in like 2006, like guys like that. I don't see myself as a locker room leader. I see myself trying to, I don't know, prove myself still um, because I feel like my size, it, 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 makes people not want to put me in certain positions. So I have to overcome and continue to earn respect, essentially. I've never been one of those guys that my reputation precedes me. Wherever I went, whatever promotion that I went to, I had to start over at the bottom. I wasn't like really good in CZW and being world champion. And then all of a sudden I had to come over here to whatever promotion. I was still having to wrestle on the bottom of the card again and then build my way up. That never like it never did anything for me to be in a main event picture anywhere. So essentially all I'm saying is I don't see myself as that, but um, I think it probably comes from me. Just, I pride myself on not allowing professional wrestling to gas me up. Uh, You know, I see a lot of guys, uh, you know, get gassed up because they wrestle for a certain company or they hold a certain title or they're having five-star matches all the time. At the end of the day, you can't, do it alone everything we do in pro wrestling you have to have a partner for it you know what i mean you're you're only as good as the man standing across the ring from you and oftentimes both of you guys can be great but you have to make sure and you have faith in in your referee like it's so many parts of the match that like enhance the experience of one match the announcers the commentators in the referee they don't get enough credit for making the matches what they are yeah, you know what I mean. If you watch a great match, a five star match with really shit commentary or a shit referee, I mean, it ruins it. Yeah. So like, um, I can't take credit for anything, um, in that regard. But uh, with Lethal, I I give credit to Lethal for a lot. I, I'm I, I, and I don't often allow him to, uh, like I guess speak in a way where he can take away that credit because I feel everything I have now in ring of honor is due to a few men that for some reason saw something in me and uh, gave me opportunities that I probably wouldn't have gotten if it wasn't for them. So guys like Alex Shelley, Cody, when he was around and Jay lethal, they've done a lot for me behind the scenes and I can't thank them enough for those opportunities to show that I guess I belong. But uh, what I learned from lethal is, uh, a lot of things outside of the ring, not necessarily wrestling related, but how to present yourself, uh, watching him do promos, being next to him and me just like not wanting to say anything and just giving him the floor completely. I learned tr- like a tremendous amount from just listening to him and how he decides to use words and, and different things of that nature. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm doing commentary for your Warrior Wrestling here in a couple of weeks, so I hope I don't blew it. Oh, I, awesome. I think that you're. I think you're wrestling Alex Shelley on that card or something like that. Yes, 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 yes. yes yeah, I am. I'll, I'll try not to screw it up. I don't want to be a shit commentator. But... Uh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> not at all. I doubt that. Anyway, doubt that. on now. Um, well, one of the things I really enjoyed because uh, you guys have been creating content for Ring of Honor here while, while things have mm-hmm. been dark. I caught the, the Ring of Honor racial roundtable you did with Jay. Uh, and several other, uh, you know, black members of the Ring of Honor roster. Do you, uh, first of all, what does that mean to you to be able to get to talk about these issues? And how do you feel Ring of Honor 
is doing when it comes to progressing uh, in the areas of, of being more racially inclusive and just, you know, better about these progressive issues in general, I guess, right now? Um, I think it's something that, uh, I mean, I'm really happy that we're able to talk about it because I think it's one of those subjects that like before <clears throat> the current climate became what it is today, I think it was something that like we all felt, but me, I'm going to speak for myself. I didn't want to believe that the company that I have been in love with since 2005 had that kind of mentality in it. But then it, had, it hit me that like, it might not have been malice intent, but sometimes they're just unaware of the issues at hand. And so because of that, they don't deliberately put people in places that they should be put in. And saying that, uh, I think it's a mixed bag of things because we want to speak up and say different things. In some cases, guys are afraid that saying something will get them suppressed even more. And then on the other hand, some guys like myself, I don't want my, the color of my skin to be like a part of me getting something more. I want to be looked at as Jonathan Gresham is the best man for the job. Yeah. So that is why we put him there. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, there's a lot of different reasons, but I think it's really good that like now no one has an excuse to not know now that we've all come out and said our bit and told our stories. Um, and hopefully for the next generation, things will be easier and more transparent for guys getting opportunities and being pushed to certain levels. Um, you know, and I'm really happy that a lot of the fans have taken to this movement and uh, definitely the round tables and stuff. People of all, you know, denominations and backgrounds and races have taken to it. And um, it's just been really positive. So I think if we can all together just keep moving in a positive direction, man, like the sky's the limit, you know, because uh, we can't leave out other um, nationalities as well, man. Like we have to start looking at, you know, um, more people from different backgrounds from that are that are here in America that we can utilize as far as wrestling. I'm really interested in seeing more women of color in you know the women's division as well. That's something that uh, we haven't really paid a lot of attention to, and I think we really need to do something about that. Yeah, no, for sure. I just talked to Faye Jackson not long ago. She was very open to coming back to Ring of Honor. Obviously, she she had some issues as well, but I think that's great, Jonathan. And like that's the thing is you know you talk about how there were not you know, people of, of color, whatever you want to say, in different positions. I mean, I think it's really interesting because, again, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds on what your, your backstage roles are, but I have heard that you being in a position of influence right now has made a lot of other wrestlers with Ring of Honor that are black or of other ethnicities or women feel much more comfortable. I mean, just, I know this is a very meta question to ask you, but, like, how does it feel to be in this position right now where, like, you know, and again, this goes back to like you becoming like a locker room leader, but maybe a little bit more than that as well. But like to be in this position to actually create change from the inside, which I think you're in a very unique position to do right now. Um, that's been my and I, I talk to a lot of younger wrestlers uh, as well, because I'm a firm believer if. There's a lot of arguments going on, political arguments uh, in, in, in the world right now. And I feel that a lot of the hate and a lot of the um, misunderstanding comes from people making noise. So the way I see it is, yes, people speaking out about, you know, suppression and injustices, not just in wrestling, but in the world in general, is very important to bring awareness to it. But if you're just going to say something like, oh, fuck that guy, or forget that guy or what it like, that's just adding more noise to the yeah. argument. And then in turn, turning people against the movement that otherwise probably would be neutral. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you don't have anything constructive to say, you know, definitely when you have a platform on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. I think you need to use those platforms to not add noise to arguments because it just, it just, makes more division. So I've always been the kind of person that if I see something and I want change, I want to now become a part of it 
to change it from the inside, like you said. That's my whole thought process. And when I saw Ring of Honor and I saw, okay, I can say it all day long. They don't want to push pure wrestling, I guess. I'm not sure why. Maybe because, you know, they were banking on the Young Bucks staying around or I don't know. But I said, okay, we have to think about the next crop and the next group of guys. And I looked at the Indies and I said, a lot of these guys aren't stylistically like Will Osbury and the Young Bucks. And eventually the style is going to change again to where like that high flying, high impact style is still going to be there, but something else is going to replace that. So I'm hoping that is pure wrestling, technical wrestling. So I want to make it where guys and women want to be a part of this company. And so that's when I, I decided to, instead of just doing my own like training camps that I was doing on my own, I decided to become a part of Ring of Honor and uh, approach management about being a coach at the dojo since they had a dojo and they didn't really have someone to be the head trainer there. So uh, we talked about that and then I ended up becoming the head trainer there. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I just treat people the way I want to be treated. And if people are feeling like that about me and about Ring of Honor, I feel like I'm just doing my job. You know, um, I just want to make people comfortable and I want the best wrestlers to gravitate towards coming to Ring of Honor. I want them to want to be here. I want people here that want to prove that they are the best at whatever they're presenting themselves as i want that vibe i feel like that's the vibe that ring of honor had back in 2005 and i want that vibe to be in ring of honor again amen all right well lastly jonathan i'll ask you you know a lot of buzz around these upcoming uh, roh tv episodes you know i believe it was brian alvarez that said fans can expect something that they may not be expecting something that's gonna make a lot of people very happy uh what what do you think fans can expect from these upcoming roh tv shows I think they can expect something completely different. Uh, exactly what I've been hoping and praying for and pushing for since I've been here in Ring of Honor, I think they're about to get that. I think they're going to get what I feel Ring of Honor has always been and still can be is the alternative to mainstream professional wrestling. Um, I think that in a nutshell is what you're going to get. Awesome. Sweet. And uh, you brought up earlier how you use your third party platforms to, to raise your voice and everything. Uh, since it's so topical, uh, Ring of Honor, are they restricting you guys? Cameo, Twitch, anything like that? You guys? No, no, they're they're not restricting anyone. Um, okay, good. This company is uh, it's, it's a great company to be a part of. You have a lot of freedom uh, with your character and um, what you do on other platforms. So. Okay, cool. All right, I had to throw it in. It was our exclusive. We broke it, so I had to, to throw it in here. That's that's awesome, that's Jonathan. Cool. Uh, thank you very much for the time. I'm very, very, very excited for this pure uh, title tournament. This is my jam, man. I I've been to every blood sport. The the style that you're doing right now and ushering in, I thank you. This is uh, a refresh for me in the world of pro wrestling. Uh, is there anything that you would like to plug, promote, put over here before we uh, wrap up the interview today? Um. Not really. I guess, um, you know, I'm on Twitter at John Gresham. I, I, I only use social media because I'm a wrestler. If I wasn't a wrestler, I wouldn't use social media at all. You know, I'd be man, completely I, off the grid. If I didn't have to do this job, I would also stay off social media. Between what you and Jordan have to deal with, I, I have no idea how you, like, stay sane. I, I can only imagine what you two have to deal with every day. I, I ignore it. She, she dabbles in it a little bit more, and it bothers her. I, like – she comes to me with those tweets and like replies from people and I just have to let it go. Cause it's just like, that's the world we live in. And if you just ignore it, it just doesn't exist. So um, that's the way I deal with things. I just don't pay any attention to it. But um, I would say if you can, uh, please just educate yourself on independence all over the world, uh, progress wrestling in uh, the UK, um, you know, uh, watch other things in Japan besides new Japan. There's, there's so many other companies. There's DDT, there's NOAA, there's All Japan, there's Dragon Gate, Michinoku Pro, and there's a lot of great wrestlers that you aren't, you know, seeing and uh, getting a chance to enjoy because you're so dead set on watching everything that New Japan produces. I'm not saying that not to watch it, but watch some other stuff too. Um, and um, support independent wrestling as in general. Um, yeah, that's, that's my message there.